Lost Property, Chapter 17. Now, I'm going to move pretty quickly through this chapter because basically what it is in in the most is actually telling us a story of what happens to, uh, to Josh as he gets through to Mackay. So he has decided um, he's going to, to go to Mackay. He's going to um, actually find Michael. He's taken a photo, which mum sees, lets him take. He tells the guys that, hey, I'm not going to put my car. I'm going to put, um, I'm going further up. I'm going to Mackay. And he finally gets himself on the bus towards um, towards Brisbane. Now, this is what he's actually thinking. And we are at page 162 of your um, novels. I hoped he was all right. There was only so much I could bluff my way through. And if I had to take him to a hospital or a social worker, they would want names and explanations. I'd bring him back, though, if he was still there and I could find him. What could be more precious? What could have greater sentimental value to my family than Michael? This was going to be so good. Roll on bus, I cried in my head. Okay, so what is actually happening here is, again, Josh is going into his assumption mode. He's making an assumption about Michael. He remembers Michael at home. In being involved in drugs and drinking and, and sort of all of that. And this is the way he still remembers Michael and assumes that this is the way Michael still is. So he might need a hospital, he might need a social worker, so if he's, you know, drinks or, or drugs. And he was going to help him. And for him, Michael is the sentimental value. He is the lost property that he wants to bring back home. So if we move on ahead... He finally gets himself into, into Brisbane and he actually has to then take a different bus to go up to Mackay. Except whilst he is in Brisbane, he is actually, um, he's burgled. I mean, he, you know, his role is burgled, however, you know, you, you want to, to, to call that. So as he's going up the stairs, someone trips him over and then takes his wallet. What was going on? It was all a freakish accident, wasn't it? Why were they all running? Oh, shit. I reached for the back pocket of my shorts. My wallet was gone. Okay. He then decides to go chasing after the thieves who stole his wallet. Unfortunately, he does not do so very well. Then bang. The next few seconds were a complete blank. As though the tape of my life had been wiped where it begins again. I was kissing the rough asphalt of the path and my lungs were heaving desperately. So as he tries to actually um, to get his um, wallet back, and we are on page 165 of your novel, he is attacked. So he's basically not only, you know, is his wallet stolen, but he's beaten up here because he tried to go and get his wallet. Um, and on, you know, here we see that he's got a cut face and his ribs are aching so um, possibly broken broken ribs from the beating that he received so he's not looking in a very good way he actually still manages um, to get back in this last page here um, he actually says at page 167 of your um, of your novel what was I going to do I was a thousand kilometers from home my parents didn't know I was here and they would be furious when they found out furious with me Phone, public phone, phone card. No, forget it. Okay, so he can't call home. He could do a probably a, a sort of a reverse uh, phone conversation um, where he calls home and then whoever's at the other end would pay for it and then he decides to do that. He started to dial the numbers. Mum answered. It's me, I told as brightly as I could. Just ring to let you know we've made it here to Port Macquarie. Okay, yeah, Dave's sister's nice. I'll ring again in a day or two. And then he puts the phone down. So he did call home, but he did not tell um, his mum what had happened to him. He changed his mind on that. And then he actually does. He gets back onto the bus, sits next to um, to a lady and who has one look at him and obviously makes an assumption about him. He's got blood all over him. He's, look, you know, he's looking tussled and he's looking like he's been in a fight. So everybody around him is now going to be making assumptions about him based on what he looks like. Um, and the woman, as, as he sat next to her, huddled against the window, wants to obviously to get away from him. In the end, um, 
It's a case of he falls asleep and then he's woken up. It's time to get off. I open my good eye to darkness and a shadowy figure beside me. The eerie silence meant the bus had stopped. What's the matter? Nothing. We're just in Mackay. That's all. Come on. I'll get your bag. So he's arrived in Mackay. Except he thought he was, when he, on the ticket it said one fifteen. he actually assumed that it was going to be one fifteen in the afternoon. Unfortunately, it's one fifteen in the morning and uh, dark. Um, and he actually has nowhere to go because it's not as if he had accommodation planned or anything as such. He's just got there. So right at the very end of the chapter, um, what he does is he gets out, he starts walking, and then he finds somewhere that he's going to nestle for the night. A driveway led between two houses to a block of units behind. This would have to do. At least it was out of sight from the road. I settled on a patch of grass between a parked car and a rickety fence, using my bag for a pillow, and despite the relentless agony of my ribs, fell asleep again within seconds. So he's basically just found a spot on the, on the grass to lie down. This is the end of the chapter.